New York's a big town, able to embrace quite a bit. They treasure the old in the big town, but they also seek out the latest. And what's new has prevailed at City Field over their first two games against the Nats this weekend. At City Field in New York, Picks 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball today. The Mets play the Washington Nationals. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you today. As the Mets play the rubber game of their three-game series with the Nationals, over the first two games of this series, two of the bright young stars in Major League Baseball have really shown. On Friday night here at City Field, Matt Harvey lit up the night. Well, Matt Harvey went 4-0 in the big matchup against Steven Strasburg. And in Strasburg's 49 starts in the Major League, this was the first time that someone had threw harder than Strasburg, and that is Matt Harvey, of course. He's off to a raging hot start. Where would the Mets be without this stopper at 4-0? And then yesterday afternoon, it was the Nationals' great young star, Bryce Harper, just 20 years old. He was stymied by Harvey on Friday night, but he showed his stuff yesterday. Well, everybody got stymied by Harper. I mean, by Harvey. Harper hit his sixth and seventh home run yesterday, and they were both bombs, one off a righty, one off a lefty. He's the youngest player, only one other player under 21 to get to, at this point of the season, 17 games, to hit seven home runs. You have to go back to 1929, and that was Mel Ott with the New York Giants, his rookie year, and Mel wound up hitting 42 that year. By the way, the video recap was brought to you by Chase. Get moving with Chase. So this is the third game of the series, and three is an important number for the Mets because they've had two starting pitchers, Matt Harvey and John Neese, who've been terrific. The rest of the rotation has not. They need Dylan G to be a solid third starter. He gets another chance today. Well, with the hopes of Mark coming back on Saturday to be the fourth starter, G is really 0-3 with an ERA over 8. Uh, there's a little bit of concern that is it his velocity is, is considerably down he's been hit hard the only bright side here is that Dylan G against the National League East at home has been very very successful and for the Nationals today maybe the most underrated starting pitcher in the league Jordan Zimmerman well you go back his last nine starts going back to last year he's six and oh with an ERA well below three sinker ball pitcher hard thrower goes after the hitters he is very very underrated he is off to a three and oh start look for his fourth win. The other Zimmerman for the Nats, Ryan Zimmerman on the disabled list. That means Anthony Rendon, their top prospect, makes his major league debut today. Mets and Nats, all the action coming your way on Picks 11. Audi Truth in Engineering. By American Airlines, the new American is arriving. By Mazda, if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. By Acela, take off. By your tri-state BMW centers, 
And by Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Enter now for a chance to win a Mets Empire Luxury Suite Night at City Field for you and 15 friends. Visit the Mets Facebook page at facebook.com slash Mets to enter. Around the majors brought to you by Delta Keep Climbing. The Red Sox keep rolling. They uh, got a three-run homer from Daniel Nava in the eighth inning and beat the Royals 4-3. to three. Also yesterday, Mike Trout had a grand slam capping a nine-run first inning against the Tigers, and the Angels win 10-0. And the Orioles sweep a doubleheader from the Dodgers, who've now lost six in a row as Baltimore now goes to 10 and 7 on the season. The Dodgers are coming in here to City Field to start a series on Tuesday night. Dylan G gets set for his fourth start of the season on a sunny but cool afternoon at City Field. First pitch is coming right up. Well, Ronnie's not here. His lovely wife, Joanna, pictured there, is here. Nice to have Joanna here with her friends. And since uh, Ronnie couldn't be here, we decided to bring his bobblehead into the booth. And it does kind of capture uh, Ronnie's sort of his motion. <laughs> that beautiful motion that I used to see. I never, I never saw it. I, I never saw saw it on this side. I always had the back side of Ronnie. And you think. Um, I think the bobblehead might have some of Ronnie's witticisms. We're going to get Ronnie on here, and he wants to make a comment. There we go. Perfect. No, no I don't no. think so. Reticent. Just me Reticent. and you today. <laughs> well, we'll have to muddle along without Ronnie, but uh, it's his, a nice bobblehead. This huh? bobblehead will keep us company through the afternoon. Starting a lineup brought to you by your local Tri Honda dealer. Anthony Rendon hitting sixth and playing third base. He's only had 181 minor league at bats after coming out of Rice University, and he makes his big league debut today for the injured Ryan Zimmerman, who goes on the DL with a hamstring injury. Otherwise, the same unit that the Nationals have been running out there for this series for Davey Johnson. And Dylan G, 0 and 3 on the year, and we talked at the open about his velocity being significantly down. And he's been batted around here a little bit. He had one good start, his first start, which was a hard luck loss. But 0 and 3, ERA over 8, it kind of tells the story. And the Toyota Metropolitan defense. And you look at Baldespin, who's earned himself a spot in the starting rotation. Baxter gets a start in left. Zimmerman 
has been giving up more base hits to left. He's had trouble more with lefties than he has righties. So Baxter's in the lineup. Terry Collins hoping for uh, some better performances from any pitchers not named Nice or Harvey. Mets made another move with a pitcher today. They designated for assignment Aaron Laffey, who worked in relief yesterday and gave up the Adam LaRoche three run homer that put the uh, Nationals in front. And the Mets have recalled Robert Carson, the left hander who pitched for the Mets some last year and had been pitching well in AAA. And your Jaguar keys to the game. Well, you need to have G obviously turn it around. He's the number three starter on the staff. Harper will keep him in the ballpark, just keep him off the bases, too. And David Wright, this is a good matchup, had good had good success versus Zimmerman, but this is a different pitcher now in Jordan Zimmerman. I want very anxious to see him pitch. Keys to the game brought to you by Jaguar. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. Denard Span one for nine in the series will lead off for the Nats. So it's a Sunday afternoon colors day. The Nats were in their alternate reds and the Mets were in their alternate blues. Feel like we're on a, an artist's palette this afternoon. And the first pitch of the day by G is a fastball in for a strike. And you see the 87 on the fastball. That's about where Dylan has averaged this year. Last year, before he had the blood clot that shut down his season, he averaged over 90 miles per hour. And for a guy who's relying on his changeup, Keith, you would think that has to be a concern in terms of the differential between the two. Yeah, and you lose the sharpness and the bite of on your breaking stuff. And Dylan, we know, has a good curveball. He's not thrown that curveball nearly as much this year. He's relied more on his slider, which is not as good a pitch. And he throws one inside to spin. It's one and two. Oh, what means what it says to me, if you've lost, you've got to pitch a little more inside, and you're less apt. To be able to get away with mistakes. Dylan's given up 20 hits in 14 innings. His last start, maybe you throw that one out in Denver because of the conditions, but the start before that in Philadelphia, he really had a rough time on a very comfortable evening. Here's the one-two to span, and he bounces the slider, and it's two and two. Jason Worth and Bryce Harper to follow. For the Nationals, who are 10 and 7 on the year, they've actually been outscored this season. Their offense has been only hitting in fits and starts. Yesterday, they were able to come from behind after the Mets had put up a five run inning and knocked Gio Gonzalez out and win 7 to 6, thanks to the home run ball. And the changeup sits high, and it's 3 and 2 to spam. Well, you saw the shot of Davey Johnson. It's club off to a, off to a hot start and then kind of hit a little. Roadblock, but now they're 10 and 7, close to three games on the Braves, who are off to a raging hot start. Braves, though, have lost the first two of their series with the Pirates to cool them down. And that's on the outside corner, so G able to spot the fastball and get Span looking for the first out of the day. Well, all set up with all the stuff inside. And that could have been off the plate. It's too close to take with two strikes. Mark Carlson giving G the call, and that's the first out of the afternoon. So one out and nobody on now Jason Worth who's one for six in this series hitting a 277 for the year and had the big injury last year missed a lot of the season and came back uh, hit 300 for the Nats last year. I think the big reason and I gosh I got to give kudos to my old skipper Davey Johnson he put Worth in that lead off in second position in the order took all the pressure off of him with the big contract gear and now he seems totally relaxed. In his new environment, in his new uniform in, in Washington, D.C. You know, you mentioned the injury from last year. That was a broken wrist that he suffered trying to make a sliding catch in right field. And yesterday in the eighth inning, Mike Baxter had a sink in the liner to right. And as Worth approached that, it was very interesting watching how he made sure that there was no chance that he could get his glove folded under him and suffer that same kind of injury. Very, very conscious of not doing that again. He's one of the better players in the league and I think one of the smarter players. He's one of the, one of the best base runners. He can steal the base. He's a terrific right fielder. Has a strong arm. He's a solid player. G ahead in the count one and two. He got that fastball to 90 miles an hour. Bryce Harper, who had a huge day yesterday, winning on deck. Yeah, he had the three hits. 
uh, you know, get lost in the shuffle is that opposite field doubly hit. Well, the Nats only had seven hits yesterday, but they were all extra base hits, three doubles and four home runs. Two and two now to Worth. Can't get him to chase the curveball, and it's three and two. So G has run full counts to his first two hitters. I've noticed that's not really the curve; that's more of a cutter or a slurve. And we know that Dylan has that over-the-top curveball, which he hasn't been using. You mentioned it, Gary. And you're correct. Three-two, and he got him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for G to start the day. Took a little bit off this little cutter here, or slider. 84 miles an hour. Look at it out in front. Got him out in front. Good pitch. Kept it down. Got it on the outside corner. Good start. So two out and nobody on. And now Harper. Bryce now has seven home runs, which ties him for second in the National League. And as Keith mentioned earlier, it's the most home runs this early in the season that a player has hit under 21 has hit since Mel Ott back in 1929. And they're playing him a slight shade in center field to the opposite field. And Tejada is up the middle. You, the left side of the infield is playing him to pull. David giving that line away, taking that hole away, and I agree. Tejada up the middle, pretty much straight up on the right side of the infield. Harper hit both his home runs to right center field yesterday. And G throws the fastball upstairs and it's 0 and 2. By the way, Ott hit 42 home runs that year in 1929. That's the most ever for a player under 21. Harper won't turn 21 till the middle of October. G with the 0 2, and he throws it at his feet. A ball and two strikes. You know, we kind of had a look too. You look at the slider here in the dirt at the two center fielders, one in Philadelphia uh, that came over in uh, in Minnesota from the Minnesota trade to the Phillies and Span too. And I think Span's a little bit of a, a better player. Oh yeah. And I think the Twins felt that way too. Here's the one-two, and it's up and away. See, he's not getting on top of that curveball like he did last year where he gets that uh, it would be the uh, one o'clock to seven o'clock break on you looking at the clock dial. It's more of a flatter break. And Harper fouls away the changeup. And, two and, two. and what I've noticed too uh, also Gary on his fastball and you see Dylan very upright no complications not not a complicated motion. Not a whole lot of push off. He's a control pitcher. A lot of his pitches, even his fastball, has flattened out a little bit. Uh, he's just not getting on top. Pulled through the hole and a base hit for Harper. So the Nats have the first base runner of the day. And you wonder how much of that, Keith, is just the inactivity? How much is the the blood clot and what that right. might the surgery might have taken out of him. Well the only positive thing to, to look out of this is that other pitchers have had blood clots. David Cohn of course comes to meet to my immediate uh, attention and and they've all come back. You see he's almost he's three quarters here. And if you're going to throw your your breaking ball it's going to be flatter as opposed to being on top. Now you can't throw your fastball out there where I just Telestrated, which is a rarity for me, and then throw your curveball up higher because that's a that's Western Union. It's all got to come out of the same slot, or hitters are going to pick up on that. Adam LaRoche, the batter. LaRoche had a three run homer in the game yesterday, his 200th career home run. Got off to a slow start this year, just starting to kick it in gear, and the Mets put the full shift on against the full heading LaRoche. Major shift. You see, I disagree if we can have uh, the uh, deck a beautiful shot. Thank you, Bill. Right here, Murphy. And right and right here, first baseman. He's gonna Davis is gonna come off here. You got a double back up here. Why? I don't understand that. Get him over here. Does that make sense? I, I, I don't 
Well, let me ask you this. If you're going to play Murphy there, would you ask Davis to not come off the bag as far and protect the line? Well, Davis is not coming off the bag. And LaRoche goes the other way against the shift and has himself a base hit. So back to back two out hits for the Nats. I don't care how much someone's a pull hitter, even if you have, let's say it's a John Milner, a Willie McCovey. And we saw Carlos Gonzalez say, well, if you're going to give me that left field, I'll take it. And that's exactly what LaRoche is doing. Oh, by the way, his home run yesterday was his 200th of his career. Congratulations to Adam. He's a fine player, by the way. Well, the other thing about the shift is, and he saw two pitches from G and both were away. If you're going to play the shift, wouldn't you think that you would pitch to the shift rather than pitch him away? I'd be reluctant to pitch in uh, because down and into a left hand hitters is a sayonara. So they must be pull hitters and they're trying to pitch him away and then trying to get them to roll over. So here's Ian Desmond swings and misses at the changeup. Desmond had a home run yesterday to get the scoring started for the Nats. One of the four home runs that they hit. Three, uh, two of them against Jeremy Hefner, who's now given up seven home runs in 14 innings this year. Desmond had 27 home runs a year ago, so that's uh, that's no aberration. He led all National League, in fact, all Major League shortstops in home runs last year. Well, and there's a strike, nothing in two. This young man had a breakout season last year. 20, 27 home runs last year for a shortstop. And that got it started for the Nats. Got him up one nothing early. He has really come a long way. And remember, when he was younger, not too long ago, two three years ago, he had issues with his throwing at shortstop. He's completely turned that around. He's become a complete player. Now G trying to pitch himself out of two out trouble in the opening inning. Ahead on Desmond 0 and 2. And the slider could get him to chase one and two. And you got to realize too that this. Nationals lineup is really missing Ryan Zimmerman. Well, that's the guy replacing him, Anthony Rendon, getting set for his first big league at bat, waiting on deck. I mean, Desmond would be hitting sixth in the order instead of fifth. Desmond, in fact, is 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position this year. He has three home runs, only four RBIs. So a two out RBI chance for him here. Well, open stance. He will stride in. He must. If he doesn't, if he steps in the bucket, he's going to have trouble. Well, geez, we're in deep counts to four of the first five hitters. 25 pitches deep in this opening inning. I don't want to take any credit, but I remember Ian Desmond's the kind of guy that one of the few players that can have wanted to talk to me about hitting and Davey Johnson came over in a series last year I think the middle series in Washington and uh, said Ian was hitting because I want you to talk to my shortstop he's dying to talk to you about hitting and I was, I'm trying to get him my whole team he said but particularly him stop looking breaking ball and sit on fastballs why wouldn't they all talk to you I'm not commenting popped it up Mike Davis has a tracked and foul ground, and that retires the side. So G pitches out of two out trouble. Mets come to bat in the bottom of the first with no score.
to you by your local Tri Honda dealer. Lucas Duda's been swinging the bat well, and Terry Collins said he considered flipping Davis and Duda for the game today, but he didn't want to mess with Duda, so he leaves him where he is. Mike Baxter gets a start in right field. The Mets are averaging over six runs per game, and they'll face a guy who has held them in check over the last couple of years, Jordan Zimmerman. Well, three and two, a lifetime against the Mets in 11 starts. Hard luck pitcher. He has recorded 12 ground ball outs in each of his starts this year thus far. Talked to Davey Johnson and Steve McCaddy, the pitching coach in spring training. They were trying to get him not to throw too many strikes. He's so aggressive and comes after hitters, even ahead in the count, that they say they want him to kind of throw pitches that they can hitters would would fish for. So Evidently he's listened and he's off to a great start hard thrower throws 94 with his fastball Jordan Jordani Valdez Bean will lead off for the Mets Valdez Bean 0 for 5 in this series getting his seventh start of the year Mets are playing their 17th game today and Zimmerman starts him off with the fastball for a strike Valdez Bean Murphy and right for the Mets in the opening inning very straightforward motion much like Dylan G no wasted Motion straight up and down. He gets a little more push off on his back foot. And he loves to pitch inside. Well, on a staff that has a 21 21 game winner from last year in Gio Gonzalez and has Steven Strasburg, who of course gets so much attention. Zimmerman kind of gets lost in the shuffle, and he is one of the best pitchers in the league. Last year pitched to a 2.94 ERA. Valdez being it's at right past him, but Desmond is there. But LaRoche, a gold glove first baseman, can't make the connection. Suzuki throws to second, and Valdez being arrives safely. Wow. That, look at LaRoche. Well, LaRoche is a guy who at times has concentration issues. I don't know if that was the issue here, but that's the ball he's got to catch. Well, I'll tell you what, if we can look at that play, watch his footwork, watch his foot on the bag. See, he's too much in the middle of the bag. You want to get on the outside here and with your toes. So you get that extra three, four inches with your stretch. And that would have been the that would have been the difference. So it's a lack of footwork there. So is it that you have to wait longer to set that back foot? No, because it's a long throw. It's just really no excuse. He's a gold glove first baseman. Like you said, he probably had a focus issue. Here's Daniel Murphy. Three for eight in this series. And he pops up the first pitch he sees from Zimmerman and fouls it back. Nothing in one. All right. And then appropriately, we'll look at the defense brought to you by Toyota, the uh, Washington National defense. And you can see the debut of Rendon we talked about. Harper moves to left this year with the acquisition of Denard Spann to play center field. Worth has a better arm than Harper, so Worth stays in right. Anthony Rendon third baseman by trade they're gonna to have to figure out another position for him because Ryan Zimmerman is signed for the long term Rendon their top prospect got a few reps at second base and at shortstop in the minor leagues this year but he's been so plagued by injuries over the course of his career it's been hard for them to oh, do the uh, the job to move him full time and Murphy gets tied not and he went around one and two. Oh, Rendon broke his ankle a la Mickey Mantle on a sprinkler head, believe it or not, his right ankle. And he re injured the right angle, ankle again, and then it then fractured his left ankle. So he's had a series of, uh, of, of serious leg injuries. And he's had a shoulder problem as well that has that set him back last year. Murphy rips one foul. So Rendon in the big leagues after only 181 minor league at bats. He was the sixth overall pick in the first round two years ago by the Nats. So they had the number one overall pick two years in a row. Yep. They got Strasburg and Harper and then the sixth pick in 2011 and they got Rendon. Scouting scouting scouting. It's going to be harder for them to get those elite picks anymore the way their record is likely to improve over the next few years. David Wright waiting on deck. Jordan Zimmerman 26 years old at Tommy John surgery in 09. 
They brought him back slowly the next couple of seasons, but last year worked 196 innings and looking to push past 200. In fact, he pitched a complete game in his last start. And the curveball misses to Murphy, two and two. Well, that's how you get number one picks. You lose 102 games, you lose 103 games, you lose 93 games. But everything changes once you're picking in the bottom of the first round. Then you have to be a little more eagle eyed. And how ironic that the gentleman that reaps the harvest is Davy Johnson, much the same way with the Mets when the things turned around in the 80s. Davy was down in AAA, saw all the young players, managed them. And he also worked in the farm system with Washington and was able to see the young talent come up. And there he is, the skipper now, doing what he does best. And of course, the Mets, by virtue of the fact that they were so poor in the late 70s and early 80s, got the number one overall pick and they picked Daryl Strawberry. They had the number five overall pick, they picked Dwight Good. Not too bad. And you got Lenny Dykes, it was a draft pick. Roger McDowell was a draft pick. By the way, on that. Down the speed play, they have charged the error on the shortstop Desmond. We've got to change that, right? Uh, I can give the error to the shortstop Desmond. Yes, really? yes, because he couldn't reach it. Well, he bloops one in foul ground. Rendon over near the railing. He makes the grab. Nice. Welcome to the big leagues, Anthony Rendon. Watch your ankles. This is not an easy play. It's a small, a short pop up, not hit high. Uses two hands beautifully. You know me, I love that. Love to see that. Not hit high. Come on, Picks up where the ball is, and then it's all let it all hang out. So that's Jordan Zimmerman's first out, courtesy of Anthony Rendon, and now David Wright will step in. David's had some luck against Jordan Zimmerman. Nine for 27, 333 with a couple of home runs. David has also tripled each of the last two days, which is interesting in that no Met has ever tripled in three straight games. Not even Mookie. Not even Reyes. How about that? There goes Valdespin, and no throw by Suzuki. So Valdespin gets to third with one out, his third stolen base of the year. Well, this is what Valdespin brings, brings to the to the table. Something the Mets don't have a lot of, and that's speed. And that is his third stolen base caught once. That's a good time to steal right there. Murph didn't get him over. Because I'll take care of it. That's will keep the infield back. RBI situation for right. And he takes a fastball for a strike one and one. And as a hitter right now. Thank you very much. Give me a nice easy RBI the infield back. See David's already six for six getting that runner in from third with less than two out. He's contributed his 14 RBIs. You can see the outfield shading David a little bit to the opposite field. And I agree. And Zimmerman painted the inside corner and it's one and two. David likes to hit that ball right out in right center field by that Xerox signs. Right by that Xerox sign. See right questioning Ooh, Mark Carlson about that call. Strike inside corner black. Let's see David. Asked too often. And we used Zimmerman to, runs it further inside. It's two and two. We used to call that that kind of strike right there. We just saw where just the out one little tip of the ball is hitting the corner, and the other is, we used to call it the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Unreachable. <laughs> no communication. Two two. And David pops it up. Espinosa back and he grabs it for the second out and Valdespin has to stay at third. Well both outs for the runners in scoring position particularly one up David all power inside. Got inside uh, on the hands of Murph and there got inside on David. So now Ike Davis who after hitting two home runs on Friday night had a rough day at the plate yesterday 0 for 4 three strikeouts and a ground ball back to the pitcher. Well there's an interesting Elias note and that is of Davis had 12 first pitch home runs last year. That led the major leagues. 
See if he tries to jump Zimmerman here. He sees so few first pitch fastballs these days. This is a better matchup for Ike because Zimmerman is not an off speed pitcher. It's pretty much a one speed pitcher. He comes at you with a hard slider, hard fastball. Starts Davis off with a curveball. Yep. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? And Espinosa throws him out to end the inning. So the Mets un unable to take advantage of the error. No score after one. Brought to you by Time Warner Cable. Switch to Time Warner Cable and enjoy better. Dylan G worked around a couple of hits in the opening inning. <laughs> Who are those guys? We're in deep conversation. Now somebody did a great Photoshop job on that to uh, make the bobblehead look as big as our heads. Looks like Ron's ready for sur Ron's ready for surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so this is the first big league at bat for Anthony Rendon who's not played above double A and he takes a strike. He was hitting 292 in 14 games in Harrisburg. A couple of home runs 462 on base percentage. Just 22 years old. And he hits the second pitch he sees to deep left center but back goes Duda and he'll have room. And that's the first out. Well, those are the first round picks for the Nats. And, you know, between Ryan Zimmerman and Ross Detweiler and Storin and Strasburg and Harper and Detweiler. who knows about the last two, but they've, uh, they've gotten quite a lot of production from a lot of bad finishes over their first few years after they moved from Montreal. And the payoff is 98 wins last year and predictions of even better this season. Here's Danny Espinosa, the switch hitting second baseman, one for four in this series. He returned to the lineup yesterday after missing four games with a bruised hand. And Espinosa off to another bad start. He had a bad start first half last year, but he turned it on in the second half. And he played some shortstop when how on Desmond went down with stomach oblique injuries. He went over and played shortstop. That's when he started picking it up offensively. You would have thought he would have that wouldn't have happened. And a good curveball by G to strike out Espinosa. Third strikeout for G. So things looking a little better for Dylan today. There's the down tilt. Third strikeout. So two out and nobody on now Kurt Suzuki who's caught all three games in this series has gone 0 for 7. Since 2008 only one catcher in the majors has caught more games than Kurt Suzuki and that's Yadier Molina. So he's the guy who's in there every day. 
now he's not necessarily the number one catcher for this Nats team they have Wilson Ramos but Ramos is on the disabled list with a hamstring injury be interesting to see how they share the job once Ramos comes back off the corner and it's two and oh well, it was a nice pickup in last year got Suzuki from the Oakland A's. Suzuki was a college teammate of Justin Turner's at Cal State Fullerton. They won a college World Series together back in 2004. Cal State Fullerton has always had a terrific baseball program. I mean, all those California schools. It must be the weather. There's always good baseball. USC, of course. Long Beach State. Yep. Fresno State. Suzuki pulls one to left, due to back at the edge of the track. He runs it down. Lucas Duda had to go a long way and tracks down Suzuki's fly ball. G has himself a one, two, three inning. This tour of City Field is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. City Field now in its fifth year of operation. Uh, there's the old apple. You know, this is the first April like day at City Field. The wind's been blowing out for most of the Mets' first eight home games. This is the first day when the wind is blowing in. More of a pitcher's wind tends to knock the ball down a little bit. Ball's been flying out of here in the early season. Now, if it's blowing in, it's more from the north, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Going from LaGuardia. And that's where it's coming from today at about 10 miles an hour. Temperature around 48, 49 degrees. John Buck leads off for the Mets in the second inning against Jordan Zimmerman and takes the slider outside. Buck with 21 RBIs to lead the National League. And Buck in yesterday's game made the final out of the ball game and off of Soriano. And Soriano led him off with a slider and fooled him. But you know what? Buck's an aggressive hitter. I don't. I like him swinging first pitch. He's had success. Well, they've been starting him off breaking ball more and more, and that's what Zimmerman did in this at bat. You know, Soriano's out there. He's a pretty good pitcher too. You know, he's out there making a living. He got the big out when he needed it. That uh, Stammen threw very well yesterday. I thought he struck out five of the six batters to face it. He's been uh, struggling. So, thought well, Tyler Clippard got away with a few in his inning in a third. Although he hasn't been pitching well, a couple of pitches to Ike Davis especially that Ike wasn't able to cash in on. 
But the Nats bullpen you have to figure is going to be good even though they've gotten off to a slow start. The Mets bullpen still very much a work in progress and they've already made a couple of moves to try to shore it up as Buck drives one a deep left center. Forget that. That is way out of here into the second deck out in Mark Reynolds territory. Buck with a long home run his seventh of the year to give the Mets a one nothing lead. Forget about which way the wind is blowing. John Buck having himself a tremendous month of April. And the place where he just hit that ball is a spot where very few hitters have hit home runs in this ballpark. Well, you know what? Three and one count. Zimmerman just grooved a fastball. And you still got to hit it. First run of the game brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. You see home runs hit in the second deck here, but not often out in left center like that. What a start to the season for John Buck. My goodness. Well, the Mets club record for RBIs in the month of April is 26. He's got 22, and we still have another week and a half to play. And who has that? Here's the swing here. And look at that. Just straight up and down, right on it. Beautiful balance. Who owns that That's record? Uh, Jeff Kent. Okay. 1994. Two and one out of Duda, who's two for five in this series and has also drawn three walks. Duda is third in the National League in on base percentage and third in the league in slugging percentage. So he's off to a terrific start. I like Lucas swinging the bat. I don't want Lucas Duda right now going up there and drawing a lot of walks. Now, you'll take the walk if they're not pitching to you. But I like to see him swing the bat. Stop. I'm not taking so many pitches. There you go. That's that's his zone right there. He's got beat. Oh, and I think that's been a step forward for Lucas as his confidence increases. Last year he was taking a lot of 3 1 fastballs. For what reason I did not, could never fathom. And I say that because I'll wait for after this pitch. Strike three called. Beautiful paint job by Zimmerman to get Duda for the first out of the inning. Well, we said from the beginning, and I don't look at computers for three hours for a ball game. I, I, I just, how often do I see uh, Jordan Zimmerman pitch to know that he likes to pitch inside? I don't need to look at a computer in a clubhouse for three hours. So my approach off of Zimmerman coming into the game would be, <coughs> excuse me, would be to look inside my first at bat and try to pull one hard down the line and scare him off the inside corner. Mike Baxter getting the start in right field today. His sixth start of the year. It's been a struggle for Baxter. Just one for his last 12 and a weak ground ball for Espinosa. And that's the second out. The home run by Buck only the second allowed this year by Jordan Zimmerman who's been doing a very good job <laughs> keeping the ball on the ground in the early season. Now Ruben Tejada. Tejada. Yesterday for the first time this season did not start after getting his ankle rolled on Friday night. But he did come up as a pinch hitter and had a terrific at bat. Against Gio Gonzalez in that met five run fourth inning and drew a 10 pitch walk. Well that's what he does best. I mean, he just kept fouling off fastball after fastball until finally Gio missed and. By the way Gio Gonzalez yesterday first three innings he was untouchable. Yep. And then that fourth inning he just lost it. You see how pitchers pitch when men are on base and how they. When they get in trouble if they can right the ship. And he obviously yesterday Gonzalez and I know that McCarver and. Was saying that he's an emotional pitcher I don't see any emotion from him I just think he. Uh, just couldn't he just. Lost it. What happened to him yesterday was reminiscent of what happened to him in that last playoff game for Washington when they had the six nothing lead against the Cardinals. Everybody talks about Drew Storen blowing the game. Gio gave back half that lead when he lost his control in the fifth inning much like he did yesterday. 
Mets get the early lead of this game. John Buck hit one out of sight to left center field. And the Mets give Dylan G a 1 0 lead in the second. Darling bobblehead day, and so Ron Darling trivia questions on the big board. <laughs> Every Met fan has to know the answer to that. And I would say his role in Shallow Howl was more than just a cameo, as Jordan Zimmerman gives one a ride to deep left, and Duda has to go back to the warning track to get this one. One pitch and one long out to start the third. I mean, he had two or three lines in Shallow Howl. It wasn't quite a, you know, Hernandez Seinfeldian performance, but it was. Uh, I thought it was more than just a cameo. It was fine, absolutely. You'll do. You know, it's all good. That's all fun when you're not a professional actor. <laughs> and you know, playing opposite Gwyneth Paltrow, and that had to be fun, right? Jeez, I'm jealous. There's a good change up, good sinking change. Seems like uh, Dylan is finding his rhythm. Denard Span took a call third strike his first time up. You kind of remember too that road trip was a road trip from uh, the dark regions. It was so cold the pitchers had such a difficult time gripping the ball in the inclement weather and that's being nice. I thought John Neese really got the short end of the, the stick. As that one's popped up and it'll go out of play. He set to pitch twice in the ice box Thanks. in Minnesota and Colorado. That's why they pay him the big bucks. It's true, he does have a long term deal. Yes, he does. Well, this is a very important start for G today, and we talked about it at the outset. The Mets have gotten everything they could have wanted early in the season out of Matt Harvey, and John Neese has held up his end. But they need for somebody else to kick it in gear, and, you know, G's the guy right now. Sean Markham, they're hoping, will be ready to start Saturday. The next time they need a fifth starter, he's going to throw uh, 75 pitches tomorrow down in Florida, and uh, that should be enough to get Markham ready to face the Phillies Saturday as Span grounds one foul. But you know Jeremy Hefner has struggled in the early season. Aaron Laffey filled in in that five hole, and now he's been designated for assignment. Matt Harvey tries to go to five and zero on Wednesday night against Ted Lilly and the Dodgers. The Dodgers come in here a stumbling team. But they'll have Clayton Kershaw pitching the opener of that series twos tonight and that's always. Exciting as Kershaw and Nice will match up. I mean it's a long way to go in, the, in, the, in, the, in this season but I kind of smelled a rat out of coming out of Dodger town. All that money they spent. Murphy slides over to play the grounder and throws out span. So that's six in a row retired by G. Now the Mets of the Dodgers coming in this week. The Phillies, who are also struggling right now, come in next weekend. The Phillies are now seven and eleven, and then they go to Miami. And then from and Miami then to Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? 
it's you got to play all the teams. But you talk about the Dodgers. They really need for Hanley Ramirez to get better. I don't think that Hanley's ever going to see the see the years that he had when he won the batting title, Gary. But he's got to be able to do better than what they're getting right now from their shortstop and their third baseman. Right? Even if he hits 270. I mean, Justin Sellers and, and Luis Cruz are giving them nothing right, right now. Jason Wirth struck out his first time up. And the other thing is the Dodgers have had injuries to starting pitchers and the Zach Greinke situation with the broken collarbone right. when that Quinn hurts. charged them. Now that really hurts. And now they just put Chad Billingsley on the DL today as well. Good pitch up and in fastball. G looking a lot more lively with that fastball today. Wants it away. Just beat him inside a big uppercut swing. Now the one two to worth hit hard toward the hole a base hit. So he got the change up up on one and two and worth as the third Washington hit. And that'll bring up Bryce Harper with a man on. The other thing about the Dodgers is that other than Adrian Gonzalez really nobody's hitting right now. Matt Kemp is off to a poor start. He'll be there when it's over if he stays healthy and also the. Uh, the Ethier Ethier is always off to a hot start and then he fades in the second half. Right. And Carl Crawford has played well since he's been back. So the talent is there. I mean, they've got tremendous talent, and you know, if, if they get their pitchers healthy, they get Hanley back even more so. Here's Bryce Harper, who's single to right his first time up. Good pitch, good sink, nice change. Getting a feel for his changeup. Watch it sink. Not a strike. That's what you want to do, and the fish were biting. So instead of one and zero, oh, you're zero oh and one. A good three-four combination in your lineup right there. Two left-hand hitters. This kid is second year in the big leagues is your number three hitter. How about that? Didn't take him long. Rookie of the year in the National League last year. Sky's the limit now. Here's the 0-2 and Buck does well to backhand that ball. One and two to Harper. Well, it's a changeup meant to be away, and Dylan chokes the ball. This is on the other side of the plate, and you wonder why Buck has to make an attempt to catch it. Well, he might swing, and it's strike three if the ball gets by him, and he can advance forward. One and two to Harper. Check in on Worth, who has a couple of steals this year. What was that game that Worth stole like four bases against the Mets in Philadelphia? Remember that back in 06 or 07? That, uh, that was with Billy Wagner on the mound. Yep. And it was in either the eighth or ninth inning. Yep. Stole all two bases. Won the game. Now the one two. And Harper lays off. I mean, Worth will have his base running misadventures from time to time. Been known to get picked off second base, falling asleep, but there are a lot of things that he can do to help your team win. He's a very, very good base runner. He's a complete player. Maybe not a seven year, $126 million contract kind of guy, but this guy hits it into center field, and Valdespin is waiting for it, looking through the sunglasses, and that retires the side. A hit and one left. One nothing Mets in the third.
New York Mets baseball is brought to you by the Chrysler Showcase event. Come see what's new and get a great deal on a new Chrysler vehicle. So far, so good for Dylan G. He's got himself a one nothing lead, and he gets his turn and bat in the bottom of the third against Jordan Zimmerman and takes a strike. G is one for four to start the year. Valdespin and Murphy to follow for the Mets, who got a long home run from John Buck to grab the lead in the second. And a little topper back to Zimmerman. And G is retired. One out. Jordan Valdez being coming up. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin. Oh. Well, we'll try and get Kevin's microphone working in a moment. Hey, you hear me now? Yeah, you're hey, seven years in. You figure I know how to turn the microphone you, on, right? You, you look great, by the so, way, Kevin. Even, so, even when your lips are moving. We're going to start calling you Marcel Marceau. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> what I was trying to say is apparently I haven't thought out from the road trip, but you know, we come from the trip, guys, and we're seeing snow on the field and all the stuff they had to do to get the field ready. It wasn't easy getting this field ready for the season either. And Bill Deacon, the head groundskeeper, did a great job with his crew as they always do. You know, besides the, the exceptionally cold winter, they also had a lot of different events here. They had a lacrosse couple of cross matches and you know what they had to do for that they they paint the field with removable paint the only way to get it off though is to go every line you have to kind of scrape it off the grass with a broom and then spray it with a hose so that takes an awful long time and then the, what they did is a process called roto tilling they basically churn up the field and they added 50 tons of new material you're talking sand clay silt to get it that perfect mixture that the field was when this place opened up. So it's back to where it was back when City Field opened, all graded out, all ready to go. And by the way, you know, sometimes when you see that batter's box is a little bit lighter than the rest of the field, it's just a drying agent. When it's cold and when it gets damp, it just keeps the batter's box a little bit firmer, Keith. Well, you know what? Not enough credit's ever given to the grounds crew. They keep this field in playing shape, and now you've got other venues here, and that, I'm sure they're not pleased to have to do all that tedious work. That's why when you win, they get a full share to split amongst themselves. Good pitch, fastball, beat them. Third strikeout for Zimmerman. I just hope that Bill and his crew never have to employ a shovel brigade. Oh, gosh. They must have looked at that and, and, and smiled. I don't know about smiling, maybe cringing. Well, <laughs> maybe say a prayer. A, Thank you, Lord. It's not me. Ever get a freak snowstorm here in April? They might be thinking about how they would plan it out better. You know what? It's just no one ever sees the work that goes on to keep the field in great shape for the players to play. It goes on before the game. It goes on after the game. And the level of professionalism in ground crew maintenance is so much greater than it ever was. The technology is better. The, the knowledge is better and these fields are in so much better yep. shape than they were when you played. And I'm just here. Well, I tell you what Pete who was the head groundskeeper uh, Pete Flynn. I always trusted my infield at Shea. But I go around the leagues now and I, I do a little, what, a how many game home games here a season. I hardly ever see a bad hop. It's got to give you such confidence oh, as a fielder. Please. There were some very bad infields when I played. Atlanta was a horrible infield early in my career in the 70s. San Diego was terrible. Murphy drives one to center, chasing Span back, but he gets there to make the grab and retire the side. Mets are on one, two, three for the first time before Jordan Zimmerman. One nothing after three.
We'll switch to Time Warner Cable and enjoy better. Well, Dylan G's made his way through three scoreless innings. Here's one measure of how much better Dylan has been today. In his last start against the Rockies, he threw 88 pitches, and the Rockies swung and missed three times. That Today, he's already gotten six swings and misses in his first 51 pitches against the Nats. Adam LaRoche took one the other way with the Mets shifted to the right and had a base hit his first time up. And that was the inning after the Mets had taken the lead at five run inning. And LaRoche, we mentioned, his 200th career home run. Only 12 second generation major league players to reach that milestone. I wonder who the other 11 are. Bonds. Okay, there's 11. Um, I'm sure there are a lot more. 200 home runs. It's a now we'll have to sift through. Boons are not there. Nope, they didn't have two home runs. You don't think so? Aaron didn't have 200. Yeah, probably not. Well, the brother, the other older brother, did. I don't think Aaron did, and I don't think their father right. did. No. Right. And because there's Ray Boone too, you know. Right. He was their grandfather. Buddy Bell, who must he had over 200 home runs. Yes, Bell's got to be one. The difference for LaRoche, he's the only second generation big leader to hit 200 home runs whose father was a pitcher. Correct. Oh, I faced his father, Dave LaRoche, when he was with the Cubs. 3 2. Strike three call. Got him looking at the changeup. Strikeout number four for Dylan G. Well, this has a lot of plate. It gets a little sinking action. And it freezes LaRoche as, it, as, as that camera was frozen. <laughs> the tape. See, he deceived him by holding the ball a long time. <laughs> Here's Ian Desmond, who fouled out to first his first time up. Of course, um, someday maybe Ike Davis will be the second guy to reach 200 home runs, whose dad was a pitcher. Out to left center, and Duda's had a lot of chances today. There's another one. That's four putouts for Duda, two out of the inning. Well, here's the grip by Dylan on the changeup, and that's the circle change. You can see that they call it that because the index finger and the thumb make a circle on the inner half of the ball, the inner side of the ball. Now Anthony Rendon, who flied out to left in his first major league at bat. And he takes the fastball high from G. Good spring for the Nats this year. Impressed everybody with his quick bat. Well, he impressed me this first at bat with the fly ball to left field at the bat speed. He hit a long home run against the Mets this spring that had everybody ooing and eye. So there's definitely a lot of talent there. Yet another young hitter with a great chance to excel in this Nationals lineup. Mm, close. Wasn't he a college, college player of the year one year with Bryce? It's another great college program. And Dylan just missed with that three and two. And Rendon pops one up right along the line. Baxter watches it go in the crowd. Speaking of uh, Rice grads, Philip Umber, today is the anniversary of his perfect game. Last night on the eve of the anniversary of his perfect game, a third of an inning, eight runs. Oh, got his lunch. And he pitched for the Astros against the Indians, who started Scott Casimir in his first start for Cleveland. So a couple of former Mets went head to head and wound up. 19 to 6. Casper didn't get out of the fourth inning. Rendon hits one out to center field. Valdespin jogging in to get it. 
One, two, three inning for Dylan G. Four scoreless for G. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by the Chrysler Showcase event. Come see what's new and get a great deal on a new Chrysler vehicle. One nothing Mets of the fourth. One nothing. We head to the bottom of the fourth here at City Field. And Jordan Zimmerman, we already know he's a very good pitcher. Steve McCaddy, the Nationals pitching coach, feels that he's the best he's ever been. Of course, coming off his first nine inning complete game with only 103 pitches, you can understand why he'd feel that way. But he got more specific. He said, you know, it's the ability to care, but not really care. What do I mean by that? You know, I, I think it's the, to know what you are. I think Zimmerman's heart has kind of grown into his body. He, he knows what he is. He wants to challenge you more than he ever has before. He knows he has a great fastball now and he's going to throw it. If you beat him, he tips his hat and you move on to the next guy. He's also added the change up a little bit more into the diet. He says the change up is the best it's ever been, but it's that feeling of knowing that you're good and McCaddy feels that Zimmerman is there. You know, Keith, my question to you as a hitter, can you sense that in a pitcher when he feels he's confident in his own stuff it isn't going to nibble or just flat out attack you, good or bad? Well, every pitcher is different, and they have different ways of attacking you. Uh, you know, you know, you're like a shark in warm water when you got a pitcher out there, and you sense Kevin that he's a little indecisive or lacking in confidence. Uh, you certainly wouldn't feel that way off a guy like Zimmerman. You'd know that you would have to buckle up your belt and a little tighter than normal and get it ready for a tough day and go up, up against a competitor. Those are the fun ones. Those are the fun at bats. Two straight curveballs here to right and he comes back with a fastball inside. Now he's behind three and one. But you can sense the confidence or lack of. Keith. Yes That's what certainly saying. certainly yes. I mean you would know that it's it's your best against his best. That's really what uh, how I always felt when you had a guy out there like like Zimmerman. And he throws him a 3 1 slider and misses. So he's being very careful that at bat to David Wright. And he winds up issuing his first walk of the game. Zimmerman had walked only three in 25 innings before that walk. I thought that was a very close pitch right there. Didn't get the call. That's, let, me, let me just follow up on what Kevin was talking about. When, when you talk about sensing a guy who's not confident, is that body language? Is that execution of pitches? How do you how do you sense that? Well, it can be a combination of things. It can be a pitcher that I own and wear out, and he knows it. And Ronnie always says he knew the guys. Ronnie will tell you, ask him who the hitters that give you trouble. And there's the Ike swing at the first pitch, breaking ball again, and jumping and leaping and lunging. So, you know, you ask any pitcher, uh, you ask Jordan Zimmerman, who gives you the most trouble. They'll tell you, but boom, boom, boom. But some guys handle it differently. He looks at it, a guy like Zimmerman would look at it as a challenge. And some guys get a little gun shot. Did I answer, did I answer your question? But when you say gun shot, how do you, how do, how do you see that from a pitch? Just how they pitch with you, they're afraid of you. You can tell. 
how they pitch you. I mean, is Zimmerman going to, because I've, I've gone, what, 10 for 12 off him? Is he going to start doing things out of his repertoire? Start nibbling? No, he's still going to come after me. He might, he might drill me. <laughs> well, he's throwing nothing but junk to Ike Davis, but I guess that's the scouting report on Ike right now. You just don't throw him fastballs. I mean, Candelaria one time, I, I had a couple games in a row, two games in a row of success back in the day when you would play in the division, only two divisions. You go to Pittsburgh, play three, and come back home, and next home, San play Pittsburgh at home. Took Candelaria twice. Killed him the one game in Pittsburgh, and I was like two for three off him. In the second game, I lasted bad. He drilled me. And it hurt. Right runs. Davis lines a base hit. Right goes first to third. Now, was that a design hit and run play or a straight steal? I don't know, but it gets Davis swinging, and he swings and has himself a base hit. Well, here is the defense. It's an off speed pitch. David never looked. I think that was a straight steal. And a nothing breaking ball up and in. Not a good slider. Well, it works for Davis and sets the table for John Buck, who had an enormous home run into the second deck and left center his first time up. Seven home runs on the year for Buck. First and third and nobody out. Mm, and Zimmerman runs one inside. Well, I tell you what, home plate umpire Mark Carlson has a very tight strike zone. I mean, Zimmerman needs that call. That was a good sinker inside looking to get a ground ball. And Buck fouls off the slider, a ball and a strike. And John Buck. Seven home runs up among the league leaders. Lucas Duda with five. Mets have 22 home runs. Started the day fourth in the National League. And you see the defense just straight up. And mm. Buck with a vicious hack at a fastball, one and two. And went right after him, and that's what Zimmerman does. Let him off with a sinker inside and a slider one and one and then he comes the fastball away and throws it by Buck. Beat him. I say he's going back inside with a sinker. Got in on him enough. Shallow center. Wright's going to tag. No. Span with the catch and Wright will just fake coming down the line as Span gets it in. Not going to chance that on the first out. Correct. So once again, Zimmerman in trouble. I'm trying to pitch out of a jam as he did in the first inning. That's at a runner at third and one out in the first. They've got first and third and one out now. And Lucas Duda, who took the call third strike his first time up. So a right hand sinker baller needs a ground ball Gary what's going to get him his ground ball his sinker. So you have two options sit on the sinker or look in fastball first pitch like that because he likes to throw inside particularly when you're in trouble. That would have been my option and if I didn't get it and I'm on one then I got to go to hitting. But that first strike until you get that first strike you can play. I think he's going to go to his bread and butter now. I'm I'm one and oh sinker. Left center field. Okay, and now you're even better. You try to throw you a backdoor slider. You're two and oh. He might be less apt in my mind to throw inside with two and oh. Right at third and Davis at first. You saw that uh, out distribution for Zimmerman. 60% ground ball. That's way up from last year. He was in the mid 40s last year. And even last season, with that lower number, he got five ground ball double plays and 12 chances against the Mets. So a huge spot here for Duda to try and elevate on 2 and 0, oh, and he takes the breaking ball for a strike. So he threw him a 2 0 curve. Yep, Baxter on deck. So doesn't want to throw Lucas pass balls. That's a 2 0 -oh backdoor breaking ball, not a pitch to hit. It might have been outside. Okay, fine. 
You're still ahead in the count. And Duda gets one off the fists. Two and two. Now that ability to throw the fastball inside is such a great weapon for a pitcher. Yes, it is. Zimmerman wants Suzuki to come out. Well, this is a big pitch right here. This is a very big pitch. They let him off uh, inside. 1 0 missed. Tried to throw a backdoor slider. Missed. Outside. Came 2 0 with a backdoor slider. They got a strike. 2 and 1. Then 2 and 1 he came inside. So now is he going to go back in or try to throw a sinker and get a ground ball? Oh, you want, oh, they want to throw over. No, oh, I thought it was a. Anyway, another up and in fastball. So this is a very aggressive pitcher. He'd be top of the food chain if he was out there in the wilds. <laughs> well, we talked about all the great number one draft picks the Nats have had because of their bad season. Zimmerman was a second round guy in 07. So they have really flourished in the draft over the last half dozen years. Slider, don't like this. On two and two, Duda lays off, and now it's a full count. Now you got to send a runner here, Davis. Although Duke, Lucas can strike out, he got to stay out of two. I take the chance. Zimmerman has walked one today and struck out three, and he's got four walks in 26 innings so far. Not quite 26 innings. He throws strikes. Davis not going, and Duda rips one foul. Out ahead of that fastball. And I can understand Terry not running Ike because it could be a, it could be a strike him out throw him out and innings over. So it's how aggressive you want to be play a hunch. Whatever you, you know so either way. I couldn't second guess either way. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat coming. Fastball in. And Duda takes ball four. So Lucas draws his 15th walk of the year. That's second in the National League behind Joey Votto. And the Mets now have the bases loaded for Mike Baxter. Very good at bat for Lucas. But he dictated that at bat because of the fact that he got ahead in the count. And that's really what he's done all and, year. And it forces the pitcher in a jam to be more careful. Uh, they, and he just missed with his pitches. But he's trying to get out of a jam and you get ahead you're putting the pressure on the pitcher to make a perfect pitch. So now Baxter is looking for his first run batted into the season bases loaded one out and Mike takes low and away for ball one. So he started him off with a sinker looking for the double play Mike grounded into a grounded out to the second baseman his first time up. Oh for four with runners in scoring position this season. Good pitch to hit. And he fouls away that fastball one and one. And it was. And you foul you foul it back and you go darn. Right down the middle. And that was your pitch to hit. Up in the strike zone. And Baxter fouls back another fastball and now it's one and two. Good cut on that one. You know you get. Two fastballs to hit, not a good cut on the first one. You foul one back on a good cut, now you're one and two. Right at third, Davis at second, and Duda at first with one out. Hard working inning for Zimmerman. He's already thrown 25 pitches in the inning. Now the one two to Baxter fly ball center field that'll get the run in at least back goes span and he gets it tagging a third and walking on in is David Wright. So Baxter has his first RBI of the season on the sacrifice fly and it's two nothing New York. Good at bat by Baxter. 
behind the count one and two that's another fastball up see he gets his blood up that pitcher out there Zimmerman and he throw over throws and then he loses his sink. There were some pitches to hit I did not read this as a catch He's very slow reading it. There's no reason to go back and forth come on down the line get your position that case halfway stand there look make your assessment and then go back to the bag and tag up. So now two on and two out for Ruben Tejada two nothing New York and Zimmerman misses away. Tejada struck out his first time up now 0 for his last 11. Davis at second Duda at first with two down Mets have only two hits the home run by Buck in the second and the hit and run single by Davis here in the fourth. But they've got two runs late swing foul and it's one and one to Tejada. It's amazing how those leadoff walks find a way to score. Of course David Wright lit off of the walk but a very close pitch three and one. Tejada hits one toward the hole. Desmond on the backhand goes to third and oh. it gets away and everybody's safe. And Desmond figured the shortest throw and the best chance was at third and to it, try and get Davis. And it was and Rendon's got to catch it. He's got to catch it. It's got to be an E5 here. He would have been out. He's got to catch that ball. Just handcuffed him, hit off the heel of the glove. Well, you know, uh, Desmond had no chance, really, as this Steve McCaddy is going to come out and have a chat with Zimmerman. It's a good time to have a chat with him because he's out of the jam right there. He got the, the double play, he's got the pitcher up. He gets out of this with one inning. It's a win for Zimmerman. It'll be an error charge to run Rendon. An assist for the shortstop since he. Made the play and Rendon was unable to catch it. Fielder's choice on the scorecard for Tejada, correct? Mm -hmm. So the bases are loaded. Dylan G coming up with a chance to help his own cause. G has six career runs batted in, in 94 career at bats. Walk to right, a single by Davis. A walk to Duda and then the sacrifice fly by Baxter playing a run and now the inning prolonged by the error by the third baseman Rendon in his first big league game his first big league uh, second big league chance he made that catch against the dugout railing his mm. ball strike to G going to the comebacker his first time up G made his first major league start against the Nats back in 2010 and he had a base hit his first time up in that game. Mm. But now he's quickly in the no two hole. So this will be the 30th pitch for Zimmerman. And G, with a defensive cut, able to stay alive. It just don't like it when those pitchers no. throw them sliders. Yeah, but there's <laughs> men on base. Yes, exactly. Sorry, right. This is war. <laughs> <laughs> now the spin would be next. And G again stays alive this time fouling off the fastball. If nothing else, the inning prolonged, making Zimmerman work that much harder. Remember, Zimmerman threw a complete game his last time out, just the second of his career, 103 pitches. Up to 75 early today. And G bloops one to the first baseman, easy for LaRoche in that. Ends the inning, but the Mets cash a run and lead two nothing after four.
Wagon Spring Toberfest event. Visit VWDealer.com. Dylan G now with a 2 0 lead as we go to the fifth. Well, the Mets needed a nice outing from Dylan today, and so far, so good. 65 pitches through four innings. He's allowed no runs and three hits, and he gets the lower third of the order here in the fifth. Danny Espinosa struck out his first time up. Well, the Braves are trying to avoid getting swept in Pittsburgh. They had an early 2 0 lead for Chris Medlin, but the Pirates just tied it up 2 2 as they go to the third. Can't be 13 and 2. All the time. There's a curveball that misses to Espinosa no. 1 0. I had a hunch he was not going to, Medlin wasn't going to have that, those kind of numbers this year. Espinosa, last two years, 21 home runs and 17. That's very productive from a second baseman. And he gets ahead of one and pulls it foul. What's interesting, though, is that we're seeing Anthony Rendon make his major league debut today, and he clearly is not going to be the third baseman for that team. At least not in the near future. The place that they are trying him out is at second base. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see whether how that transpires over the next couple of years. There was some thought before they re-signed Adam LaRoche that maybe they would move yep. Zimmerman to first and make a spot for Rendon there. The, the, uh, LaRoche gives them the left-handed power bat that they needed. That's why they won one of the reasons, main reasons why Davies troops. Uh, won 98 ball games last year and really never looked back. Led most of the way, if not all the way, last season in the National League East. Now, LaRoche had his best season last year. They signed him for two more years, which seems reasonable at age 33. They're a little top heavy right handed, and, uh, you know, Zimmerman with the sh throwing problems, you know, two years from now, they could go over there. There's certainly no room in the outfield when you talk about you know, moving Rendon out there. You've got Harper and Worth on the corners. They're both going to be here for a long time to come. Worth's still got, what, four more years after this on his contract. And Harper, they hope, is here for 20 years. Two and two now to Espinosa. They could always put Harper back behind the plate, you know. He, he can catch it. That's what he was coming up. He was a catcher. What is? I don't think they're going to do that, though. It's like a cartoon character. You don't love the hair, do you? No, I don't. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball by G to strike out Espinosa. His fifth strikeout. It's a season high for Dylan. Good slider. This is the G that we've come to know and love over the last few seasons. And with Gary, Sean Markham evidently uh, is going to be up for starting, uh, what was it, Saturday? Saturday against the Phillies. Yeah. So there you have kind of G can come about and Markham can be the pitcher that he is. Stay healthy. And you've got four starters. There's the curveball. It's a slider. You can see on the side of that seam to get be able to get that spin on it. Kurt Suzuki fly to left his first time up. G's first start of the year against San Diego. He pitched pretty well. Gave up just one run in six innings. That was enough to beat him that day. And he had that blow up in Philadelphia where he just couldn't get anybody out. Followed by the cold weather start in Colorado. So now today on a. Cool but comfortable afternoon. G. Pitching as well as he has this season. And slider outside two and one. Suzuki now 0 for 8 in this series. The pitcher Zimmerman on deck. There you go. He's throwing well. Spotting his fastball. It's meant to be away. And that had a low. Oh, it was down the middle. Ouch. Don't want to do that too often. Oh, and Suzuki goes down in the high fastball. Back to back strikeouts now for G. He's got six on the afternoon. Upstairs, don't have to throw a strike. And you don't have to throw it 97 miles an hour like Matt Harvey to get guys to go fish for it. 
But he's throwing 89 90 today, which is a nice improvement for Dylan, whose fastball has been more in the 87 range this year. So here's Zimmerman, who flied one deep to left his first time up. Zimmerman, a pretty good hitter. He's 0 for 7 this year, but 182 lifetime with a home run. Not bad for a pitcher. And he takes a curveball for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. You mentioned G made his big league debut against the Nats. That was September of 2010, and in that game, he pitched five hitless innings before Willie Harris broke up the unlikely no hit bid with a leadoff home run of the sixth. G wound up going seven, a lot of run on two hits, and a terrific big league debut. Zimmerman hits one past the mound, but Tejada is there to sweep up. And the side retired. One, two, three inning against the lower third for Dylan G. Halfway through, two nothing New York. Sunday afternoon in New York. Gosh, that's a pretty city. Sure is. A lot of people live in there. Skyscrapers and everything. I overnighted the other night. Friday night. What's today? Hey, Sunday. All day. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Some of the big crowd gathered here at City Field on a sunny Sunday afternoon. Lots of kids on hand. Yeah, you're on TV. A little chilly in the shade today, very comfortable in the sun. It's so typical of April in New York. They never sang a song uh, springtime in New York. It was always autumn in New York. Springtime in Paris. <laughs> but they don't play baseball in Paris. Please. Not at big stadiums. Top of the batting order for the Mets in the home fifth inning against Jordan Zimmerman. Jordani Valdez being reached on an error in the first inning, stole third, but was stranded. Then he struck out in the third. 0 for 7 in this series. It'll be Valdez being Murphy and Wright for the Mets in the fifth. As they get the measure of Jordan Zimmerman, who's given up just two hits. And he starts Valdez being off with a curveball. Ball one. Valdez being hit a home run against Zimmerman last year. One of the eight home runs that Valdez being hit in his rookie season. How many did he hit pinch hitting last year? Five. That was an incredible and the most remarkable one was the one off Papelbon in Philadelphia that won the ball game. That was his first hit. Yeah, that's right. He also hit one off Tyler Clippert. He went off Zimmerman, so he. Now he got some quality pitchers on his resume. Five pinch hit home runs set a club record last year. And he 
did it in fairly short order. Two and two now to Valdez being. And he gets him with a fastball. Second time Valdespin has been struck out. The fourth of the day for Jordan Zimmerman. And that's a little alarming from Valdespin. He doesn't really strike out that much. He just really didn't waste any time with him with fastballs. So one out here's Murphy, who's fouled out to third and flied out to center, 0 for 2. Started the day ninth in the National League in batting, second in the league in runs scored, third in the league in doubles. So Murphy off to a fine start for a Mets team that. Over their first 16 games, scored 97 runs, which matches the most Ooh. runs the Mets have ever scored in their first 16 games. Jeez, what do I do to throw a strike? Zimmerman saying that Mark Carlson behind the plate. Murphy takes one the other way, and that'll go foul. One and one. Well, Murph, a rare hitless day thus far. He got two more at bats. Just been off to such a great start. 344, 12 RBIs. That 12 RBIs from your number two hitter uh, in the lineup, you know, after 16 games, he'll take that any day of the week. Let's have a bunch of guys having terrific Aprils Murphy and Wright, Buck, Duda. I've said it before. I think eventually, if the Mets can find themselves a one-two hitter, hopefully Valdez can be the leadoff. If they can find a two-hitter, then I think Murph goes to the three-hole, and then you lengthen that lineup down, move David down. It's no criticism to David. Murph's more of a line drive hitter, doubles hitter. He's a clutch hitter. He has a good eye at the plate. He can walk. Doesn't strike out. That's what you want from your third hitter. But we'll see. Down to first base, and LaRoche makes the toss to Zimmerman for the second out. So David Wright will bat with two out and nobody on. David walked and scored a run in the fourth inning. He's also popped up 0 for 1. I was going to say 97 runs in 16 games, matching their most ever. The Mets lead the league in runs per game, and yet they enter the day 8 and 8. Yep. And I think that that becomes a little alarming and really speaks to the need for the Mets to bolster the back of the rotation, which Dylan G is helping to do today. And also the need to lengthen the bullpen where you know, Bobby Parnell's pitched pretty well. Brandon Lyons look good, but some of the other guys out there have struggled. And they've moved around some pieces in that bullpen. Greg Burke is gone. Aaron Laffey is now gone after starting and relieving. Jerry's familiar is here. Now Robert Carson is here to bolster the left side. I thought it was an interesting outing for Josh Edgen yesterday. He has not been pitching well. He gave the Mets one very good inning, but then made the one bad pitch to Bryce Harper that wound up being the difference in the game. Well, one thing about Josh and his slider is too flat. He's all in the same plane. So whatever elevation that ball comes out of his hand, and that is what, say, 10 feet out of his hand, the, pit, the hitter can start folk zoning in on what the pitch is going to be location whether it's going to be low or high it's all everything's going to store wherever it starts and it's going to stay on that level there's no tilt to his breaking ball good sinker right there from Zimmerman tough pitch I mean these are all numbers to be savored yes for the first three weeks of the season and they've hit well in the clutch too with men on base 333 with runners in scoring position coming into the day and that is what has helped them to the top of the list in runs per game as David has to jump back from that fastball and it's three and two and what's helping is they have really bought into the 
the organizational philosophy. They've seen a lot of pitches. They draw a lot of walks. And that breaking ball, and David walks for the second time today. He's got 15 walks. So that is an uncharacteristic three walks in this ball game for Zimmerman, and two of them to right, which tells me he's not going to let David hurt him. Right. Well, we saw that the last at bat. I mean, he's being very careful with right, especially with Davis struggling the way he is. Now, I got a base hit to right field his last time up with right in motion. He got a breaking ball that he was able to get his bat on. He got a breaking ball that was a hanger up and in the strike zone. So right at first and two out. By the way, Zimmerman today is trying to go to 4 and 0 on the season. You know, the last time a pitcher for this franchise won his first four starts of the year, Pedro Martinez as an expo. Oh. 1997. As the Expos moved to Washington, became the Nationals in 2005. Well, they're playing him up the middle on the left side of the infield, deep at second base because I doesn't run that well. I get two home runs on Friday night. There goes right and the curveball in for a strike and no throw from Suzuki. Right picking a perfect pitch to run on his fifth stolen base of the year. Yes he got the breaking ball but it wouldn't have mattered. He got such a terrific jump. David running with his flippers on. Coming into today Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates led the league with six steals and now right just one behind. So now runner in scoring position for Davis with a 1 1 count. And another curve ball, 2 and 1. By the way, uh, you mentioned an uncharacteristic three walks for Jordan Zimmerman. He's never walked more than four in any major league game. And Zach Duke, the lone left hander in that Washington bullpen, gets up. And Davis grounds one weekly for Espinosa to play and that retires the side so a walk and one left we played five now at City Field Mets two that's nothing. Facebook friends at Mets social media night this Wednesday at City Field. Tickets include food and beverage, a T-shirt, iPhone, skin it, and a chance to win. To uh, throw out the first pitch, visit Mets.com for tickets. Now, let me ask you about social media night. They're going to bring all these people together. Are they going to actually talk to each other, or are they going to Facebook and tweet to each other? I don't. I don't know. No one seems to communicate face to face anymore. 
Very interesting to see how that goes. Here's Denard Span who takes a curveball outside for ball one. Remember when you had to get enough guts in your kid, the, the, the girl that you liked in high school, and you had to get enough guts to ask her out? Well, you could call her, right? You could pick up the phone if you had her number. Well, no, if you, you didn't have her number, you had to break the ice. That was terrifying for me. I was on else, else too. Was on, <laughs> especially their parents. G falls behind on Denard Span 3 0. G hasn't walked about it today. He struck out six. Span just one for 11 in this series. Has struck out and grounded out today. And that's ball four. So G, who had been sailing right along, walks the leadoff hitter on four pitches to start the sixth. Well, we all know the number one nemesis for pitchers is a leadoff walk. But nothing's changed in the game as much as a lot of the game has evolved. Still 60% of leadoff walks find a way of scoring. Jason Worth will try and make that happen. Worth has one of the three hits for the Nats, a single to left in the third. He's also struck out one for two. Span at first and nobody out. Worth the tying run at the plate in a two nothing game. And he swings and pops one up in foul ground. Baxter coming over for a look, but that's in the crowd. So G striding into dangerous territory, walking Span. You got Worth at the plate, Harper and LaRoche, the two big left handed bats to follow. It has been a Nice bounce back outing for G so far. It's gotten a couple against Jordan Zimmerman to give him a lead. But the margin is thin. Ball and a strike to Worth. Coming into the to, today, as Harper waits on deck. Mets starting pitcher ERA when Harvey and Nice go to the mound was 2.22 with everybody else including G 7.02. It was a good breaking ball one and two and that really just points up what the Mets need out of Dylan G and what they've gotten so far today. Well hopefully Sean Markham will be returning on Saturday for a start. Hopefully. He's going to get through his test tomorrow down in Florida, but that is certainly the expectation and the reason why the Mets were able to designate Aaron Laffey for assignment today when they brought up Robert Carson. With Troy Hawkins, first man up in the Mets bullpen here in the sixth. With G up to 87 pitches. One, two to Worth. Fly ball right field chasing Baxter back. He'll have plenty of room. Now the wind gets a hold of it and Baxter stays with it to make the catch. The ball really fooled Mike at the last moment. Well, he had it all the way. <laughs> Eventually. That thing just kept fading away from him. So one out, Span still at first, and now Bryce Harper. Wind blowing in today for the first time in nine home games. So it's a little different wind pattern than the Mets have experienced. This is the more usual April wind pattern. Did bother John Buck though. It's all 460 feet. Here's Harper who won 440 yesterday. He's singled and flied out one for two. And G starts him off with a fastball strike. Good pitch, good little sinker, knees outside corner. Right where you want it. Good pitch. Outfield defense shading Harper to left field slightly. Might be one of those pitch him away, play him away. David, David Wright way off the line, taking away the hole from Harper. Now on one and one, Harper swings and grounds one foul. So 
Justin Upton off to a tremendous start for the Braves, leading the National League in home runs, and two guys in this game right behind him. Uh, what a pickup for the Braves, huh? Frank Wren making him look like a genius. And they've needed Justin to hit because yes. BJ hasn't, Jason Hayward hasn't, Dan Ugla hasn't. Freddie Freeman's hurt. Staying away. So far, Evan Gaddis has been a godsend oh, for the wow. Braves. But mostly it's been their pitching, which has been tremendous through the early season. But you kind of expected that from the Braves. Their bullpen is solid. But wait till they get Beachy back. Span at first and one out. One two to Harper and that one oh. skips into Buck. He'll make the throw to second and Span is out. An incredible pickup by Buck as Span took off when the ball hit the dirt and Buck threw him out easily. Oh, this is just some kind of play and I think Span just felt he had no chance to make this play on the, uh, to get the backhand on the pick. And it's an error in judgment and what a play by Buck. That's the second one today that Buck has been able to backhand out of the dirt as G stumbled on that pitch. And Buck makes a great pickup and a strike. Buck also threw out a runner from the backstop yesterday. That was uh, Tyler Moore who struck out. The ball went to the backstop and Buck threw a strike to first base to get him. All in all, when you're down two runs, that is a bad base running blunder by Span. 3 2 to Harper, and that's inside ball four, so. Harper replaces Span at first. Second walk of the inning for G. By the way, not a caught stealing for Span because he didn't take off till the ball was in the dirt. So it's something to put out 2 6. You can't blame Span though, can you? Well, down two runs, you can't assume. You know what they say about that? He won't go in the air. And it's nothing good. No, correct. <laughs> Cer <laughs> with certain limits. Does David Ortiz have those same limits? I know <laughs> about that. Is <laughs> Adam LaRoche, who's single to the left and taking a call third strike, one for two. And that one skips away from Buck, and this time the runner will get to second base. On the wild pitch by G. Harper now at second. Well, when you're down two runs, Gary, you've got to be safety first, particularly if you've got your three, four, and five hitters coming up. Well, if you're a catcher, there are only so many balls you're going to backhand out of the dirt in the course of a game, and Buck is now two for three. So now runner in scoring position for LaRoche, three infielders on the right side. Wright has to stay home with the runner at second, and now time is asked for. These are those all important and very difficult two out RBI situations. Not too many hitters are good at it. LaRoche so far this year, two for five. G missing with the changeup to fall behind two and oh. Very dangerous hitter at the plate. Almost an equally dangerous hitter on deck, although a right hand hitter in Ian Desmond. G pushing toward 100 pitches now in the sixth inning. It's 3 0 to LaRoche. If you're Davey Johnson, you give your big power hitter a hit sign down two runs? You have to think so. There's Davey looking at the card, the lineup card. He's thinking ahead right now. Well, G's already walked two in the inning. And now three as he walks hmm. LaRoche. So Dylan went five innings without walking a batter, and now he's walked three of the last four hitters, and that's going to be all for him. Terry Collins making the move right away, trying to protect a 2 nothing lead. The tying runs on base via the walk, and so G will exit, and Latroy Hawkins will come in the game. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Nissan. Shop ChooseNissan.com. G takes his exit. We'll be right back to City Field.
scoreless innings as his control began to betray him here in the sixth. And he's looking to be bailed out here by the veteran Latroy Hawkins. Had a perfect frame in yesterday's game in the ninth. 40 years old, invited to spring training and made the ball club. See the overall number is not pretty for Latroy. He hasn't walked a batter but given up a ton of hits. He'll face Ian Desmond with the tying runs on base and two down. Desmond 0 for 2 today. First pitch foul back. Starting him off with a slider. Desmond 2 for 9 in this series including a home run yesterday. Harper at second LaRoche at first with two down the Mets begin the day with the worst bullpen ERA in the major leagues 5.47. Desmond yet to drive in a run this season uh, with runners in scoring position excuse me. All for eight in those spots. Mm. And a call strike nothing in two. Good fastball away. Two on and two out. The 0 2 coming to Desmond, and he misses outside. The ball and two strikes. But Troy Hawkins working on back to back days, trying to protect Dylan G. One two slider away two and two now to Desmond. You know it's kept all four pitches away from Desmond. Anthony Rendon in his first big league game would be next. Two on two out two and two to Desmond. Strike three call. But Troy Hawkins comes in to strand a pair. Keeps the Mets up 2 0 in the sixth. As we go to the bottom of the sixth. Well, the veteran, excuse me, left hander came up with the Pirates in 05, took the league by storm, 8 and 2 and 14 starts, but it went all downhill from then, had elbow issues. He's the sole left hander in this bullpen. Mets upcoming schedule brought to you by Acela. Take off. Mets have an off day tomorrow. They welcome in the Dodgers for three starting on Tuesday night. Mets will see three lefties against them in that series, including Clayton Kershaw. 
Now the Phillies come in over the weekend. For more about the upcoming opponent, let's check in with Kevin. Well, Gary, you guys were talking about the Dodgers before. The injury issues, obviously, a factor, especially with their pitching staff. We know about Granke with the fight with San Diego, the collarbone, he's out. Cap Yada on the X Met with a calf injury, and they just put Billingsley on the DL today with elbow pain, not a good sign. But despite the injuries, the starting staff has been dreadful. The last four games coming into today, they've allowed 19 earned runs in 19 innings pitched. Now, granted, one of those was kind of an anomaly because Clayton Kershaw gave up three homers in the day. I don't think that's going to happen maybe ever again. But they're struggling big time. And maybe the, the biggest name struggling is their MVP candidate, Matt Kevin. He's been a good April player. I mean, last year he had 12 home runs in April. This April, 206, no home runs, 19 strikeouts. It's been quite a struggle for LA so far, and they're losing 4 to 1 this afternoon in Baltimore. Well, you see some of their uh, pitching problems. Capuano replaced Granke, made one start at the leave with a calf injury. Billingsley just going on the DL today, as Kevin mentioned. John Buck, who homered back in the second inning, a 460 foot blast into the second deck and left center. One for two on the day. The Dodgers have lost six in a row. Playing their interleague series in Baltimore. They got swept in a doubleheader yesterday. They're down in the fifth inning, four to one today. Breaking ball struck him out, so Duke fans Buck for the first out of the bottom of the sixth. Brandon Lyon up in the Mets bullpen. It's been interesting following Terry Collins' usage of Brandon Lyon. You figured he was going to be strictly the eighth inning guy for this team, but because of the struggles of so many other people in that bullpen, Terry has often had to go to Lyon earlier in games and he's getting ready for the seventh today. He pitched the sixth yesterday. He's been the Mets' most effective bridge guy to get to Bobby Parnell. Of course, Parnell hasn't had many save opportunities because the Mets, for the most part, when they've won, have won by large margins. Duda's is 0 for 1 and a walk. Zach Duke was released by Houston in spring training last year. The Nats picked him up. Made eight appearances for them, and now the only lefty in that Washington bullpen. Which I think is a weakness, a glaring weakness on this team. Not to disparage Zach Duke, is the fact that they had Sean Burnett and Tom Gorzolani out in that bullpen last year. Both guys were just had phenomenal years, and it's shocking that they got rid of them. I think they see Duke as more along the lines of Gorzolani. Yeah, has been a starting pitcher can come in work two three innings at a time, but they just don't have that situation lefty in Burnett who's very important. No, I now the Mets for what how many years how they have only one left hander and Burdak never been a proponent of uh, one left. You need at least two now the Mets have three out there. And Duda somehow got out of the way of that three and two. Robert Carson brought up today as the third lefty in the Mets bullpen to go with Agent and Rice. The odds of a 3 2 breaking ball here from Mr. Duke. Pretty good. Which is basically just a not a very sharp breaking ball. Just a big sweeper, as we used to call it. Dude has been 3 and 2 in all three of his plate appearances today. That's Strike ball. three call got him looking at the fastball. Back to back strikeouts for Duke to start his stint. Well, that's good, good pitching right there, and Lucas caught looking. When you watch Suki and Francis on the PIX 11 morning news, you get more of what you want in the morning. More news, more weather, more fun. The PIX 11 morning news, weekday morning starting at 4 a.m. You're up and up early, Keith. Not that early. Those people have no lives. Those early shows. Oh, they! My gosh, they have to go into hibernation. If you're going on the air at four o'clock, what time are you getting up? Well, they got to go prepare. Yeah. Baxter drives one to left center, and that's in for a base hit. Harper misplays it, and so Baxter's going to try for two. Harper's throw sails past Espinosa, and safe at second is Baxter. Well, Harper misplayed that ball and didn't show much urgency picking nope. it up, and Baxter took advantage. Look at this. He just, oh, that'll teach you. He took it for granted, and Baxter, the little pickpocket there, nice hustle, nice hitting. 
One thing about Baxter, he always runs everything out. He's a hustler. And he took advantage there. It's a single for Baxter, an error on Harper. So he's in scoring position with two out for Ruben Tejada. Ruben has struck out, reached on a fielder's choice. Marlon Bird has come out on deck to pinch hit if Tejada keeps the inning going. So Duke, after striking out the first two, gives up the base hit to Baxter, and Suzuki smothers that. Ball one. Jordan Zimmerman went five. He threw 96 pitches after going the distance in his previous start. Two runs, two hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and a home run. There's Bird on deck to pinch hit. And now Duke behind on Tejada, 2 0. I'm just wondering if Duke is paying attention to who's in the on deck circle. Would you want to pitch to Marlon Bird, the veteran? There's no one up in the bullpen for the Nationals, or do you want to pitch to a number eight hitter that's just a singles hitter? Nope. I think I think I'd want to pitch to Tejada, even though he's good in this situation. Swinging two and zero, oh, and he pops it up. Who's going to play it? Espinosa makes the grab, and that retires the side. A hit, an error, and one left. Six in the books at City Field. Two nothing, New York. Featuring their new chicken fajita sub only at Quiznos. Seventh inning, and Brandon Lyon comes out of the Mets bullpen. Well, Lyon pitched on 420, an inning and a third against Washington. He's got a nice sparkling earned run average. Retired all four batters he faced yesterday with a couple of strikeouts. He has been very good. Curveball's been sharp. And Lyon has settled in very nicely in a Mets uniform. He'll face six, seven, and eight in the Washington batting order. It's an interesting choice here because you look at the way the lineup sets up, and it makes sense here for Lyon to face the predominantly right hand part of the order. Then presumably you have the lefties to work the eighth inning against the left hand part of the Nationals batting order. Ball one to Rendo. And you've already got a lefty up in the bullpen, so if there's any trouble with Murphy comes around to Valdespin or, or Murphy, you have the option to bring in a left hander in the middle of the inning. Rendon takes outside, 2 0. Anthony Rendon in his first big league game is 0 for 2. Henry Rodriguez, the hard throwing right hander up in the Washington bullpen. Rendon has flied out twice in his first major league game and he takes a borderline strike from Lyon and it's two and one. Rendon was hitting 292 in triple A in a double A excuse me at Harrisburg just 14 games. Only 181 minor league at bats. 
And he takes a rip, and it's two and two. Now Lions pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Brandon Lyon fans Anthony Rendon one away. Got him fishing. So one out and nobody on now Danny Espinosa who's been up twice and struck out both times against Dylan G who fans six in his five and a third scoreless innings. Really nice bounce back effort by G. That's a change up. That's a circle change. Which is really his fourth pitch. It's unusual to see a relief pitcher with that many weapons. And he's been a relief pitcher his entire major league career. Started some games with Toronto right at the beginning of his career. That's a long time ago now. Back in 01 and 02. But Cape became a full time reliever in Boston in 03. Then four years in Arizona, Detroit, three years in Houston, finished last year in Toronto. Over 540 major league games under his belt. And he gets ahead on Espinosa with a curveball, one and two. Development of that curveball has made Lyon really the pitcher he is. Well, that's always been his out pitch. Doesn't throw as hard as he used to. One time closer, saved as many as 26 games in a big league season. And Espinosa takes the curveball in the dirt, two and two. Saying all those disparaging things about the Dodgers, they have four runs home in the fifth and have taken the lead on the Orioles 5 4. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, all you Brooklyn people out there, but I was never a Dodger fan. I grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> there are a few Brooklyn Dodger fans left. Although, we did admire the Dodgers, they always found a way to beat those Giants. Three two to Espinosa. It's the comebacker. Flagged down by Lyon. Two out. So two out and nobody on. Now Kurt Suzuki, who's flied out and struck out, 0 for 2 today, 0 for 9 in this series. Get those Dodger games on TV and you have Koufax to watch one night again, probably against Gaylord Perry. Then the next night it might be Drysdale against Marischal. We were just great pitching matchups. And when you were growing up in the Bay Area, those were the only games yep. you saw on TV. That right? was the only games we saw with were the uh, nine games, the three three game series, is in Dodger Stadium. And then in 1962, when our beloved New York Mets entered the league along with the Houston Colt 45s. They televised the Colt 45s also, so we got to watch 18 games. We were always very spoiled in New York because even back in the early days, in the mid 60s, the Mets would broadcast at least 125 television games a year. I don't believe they televised spring training games. The Giants in, in, it was Casa Grande back then, those days in the Phoenix area. Lyon falls behind on Suzuki 3 0. Steve Lombardozzi's come out on deck to pinch hit. So I remember the Giants' first manager when I was just got into baseball was Alvin Dark. Now Dark was their manager in 62. Right? Yes, he was. Took them to the World Series. Yep. Against the Yankees, McCovey line drive to Bobby Richardson to end the World Series. It's sharply Tejada with a great stop. Gets up and throws him out. What a play by Tejada. That ball was by him. And he reached back and snagged it on the one quick hop. And then the spin around to get Suzuki. 
tremendous play by Tejada, and Lyon likes what he sees. Two nothing New York. Or nothing. That's got a home run from John Buck in the second. They added a run in the fourth. Dylan G, five and a third scoreless. The bullpen has kept that lead. Two nothing Mets. As we play in the seventh, the out of town score is brought to you by Audi Truth in Engineering. Alex Sanabi on the mound for the Marlins. He's pitched pretty well this year for the four and 14 Marlins. Two two in the seventh with the Reds. Braves had Chris Medlin on the mound today, trying to avoid getting swept in Pittsburgh. Comes up 2 nothing in the fourth. Trying to snap the Brewers six game winning streak. Giants got great pitching from Tim Lincecum last night. As they beat the Padres. The rest of the scoreboard including the Sunday night game the Cardinals and Phillies. Phillies now 7 and 11 on the year. After getting shut out by Lance Lynn and company yesterday. Zach Duke starts his second inning of relief for. Washington Marlon Byrd will pinch it for New York. Byrd went one for four yesterday. He's got a six game hitting streak going. Here is Ron Darling's lovely wife Joanna here for Ronnie's bobblehead day since Ronnie couldn't be here. She's a sweetheart. And Byrd swings over the first pitch curveball nothing at once. Ronnie is where today. I believe he is in Baltimore watching that Dodgers Orioles game. He's scouting. <laughs> because the Dodgers will be here Tuesday night. They're the longtime friends, Buck and Lion in the Mets dugout. They grew up together in, in Utah. They started uh, playing Little League ball together and had sleepovers from the time they were seven years old. And here they are playing in the big leagues wow. together. It's got to be quite something. Oh, and two coming to Bird, and Marlin takes low and away. Well, that's like almost like Bob McClure and myself, the left-handed pitcher. We Mets picked him up. Had to face him in the World Series in '82. Bob joined the Mets in '88. Now, how far back did you and uh, we grew up Bob? together? Well, we played on the same little league team when we were eight years old. I was eight; he was nine. It was in the minor leagues, Pacific of Lumber. That's when we played with just the tops and the jeans. When you got to the majors and you got the full uniform. Pants and the socks. Yes. And then he, we never played again against each other again for the next, for my 9, 10, and 11 years, because he was a year ahead of me. He played for the 
charcoal broilers. We were Lindemar Realty and Ed and Jim's Phillips 76. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> One thing I remember from playing in uh, in Little League, the only sponsor I remember, and I remember it for the wrong reason, is we were, you know how in uh, in Bad News Bears, there, Chico's Bell Bonds? Mm -hmm. We were uh, Golden Gate Karting. The garbage company. Okay. <laughs> so you can imagine what the other kids said. Oh, I can imagine that our sponsorship. My dad designed all the uniforms too, and uh, our uniforms with Ed and Jim strike three and a backdoor curveball. I tell you what, Mark Carlson has a very erratic strike zone tonight. Since Marlon Bird away shaking his head. Since Phillips seventy six was orange and royal blue, you remember. Dad did the complete or design our complete uniforms like the Dodger uniforms, except instead of the red number on the front, it was orange. It was a beautiful uniform. Colin Calgill batting for Jordani Valdespin in a lefty righty switch. Calgill started in center field yesterday, had a big two run single in that five run inning against Gio Gonzalez. And he takes inside for ball one. So you guys were resplendent. Well, my dad was an artist. My dad was a very good artist, so he was he was cool. He designed all of our uniforms. So that's where the the, the colorful tendencies come from. Yep, your your beautiful scorecard with its multi-layered yes. color schemes. Yeah, I like colors, and um, I, my favorite era is always the impressionist era, which was always popping with colors. I'd love to see you do your scorecard just in little dots and small brush strokes like like a, like a Monet. Oh, pointillism, right? That is a that's, you know, that's very good here. Impressive. Have you been to Paris? You got to take Lynn to Paris. <laughs> I've been to the Louvre. It's amazing. Swing and a miss, and Duke has back to back strikeouts to start the seventh. But I'll tell you, they've, uh, when we were in Chicago um, last year, got to go to the, the Art Institute there. A great, great collection of impressionists. If you ever have an off day in Chicago. Well, I remember when the Museum of Modern Art had uh, Starry Night, Van Gogh's Starry Night, for on display, and it was, I would go by once a month and just go take a look at it. Daniel Murphy takes a curveball for a strike. Murphy 0 for 3 today. Popped up, flied out, grounded out. Duke looking very impressive in relief. Has struck out four, and he's ahead on Murphy. As you see the bat flip. Did they yesterday too? Murph is sometimes too much the perfectionist. Sometimes the pitchers can trick you. Not that time. Threw him one too many breaking balls, and Murphy has himself a two out hit. And he stays away from the collar. One a day keeps the doctor away. Murph just really, really off to a terrific start. So David Wright gets a chance against the left hander. David has walked twice, stolen a base, scored a run, otherwise 0 for 1. Six for 23 against Zach Duke. That's a 261 average with one home run. So he's battled them on pretty even terms. We'll see how careful Duke is here with Ike Davis on deck. Zimmerman was very careful with Wright in his last two at bats. Now, if you're Murph here, you don't want to steal a bag. You want David to hit. You hear Scott Rice, the left hander up in the mid bullpen. Want David? If you steal a base, you better get it. If you steal it, they're going to walk. They're going to walk David. So you hold. And David's history, we all know. All you Met fans know, particularly, wears out left-handers. So you want David swinging the bat here. And David breaks his bat and rolls one out to Desmond, and they get the force play to end the inning.
So two terrific innings of relief for Duke, but the Mets still up 2 nothing as we go to the eighth. game in center field after pinch hitting and Scott Rice will start the eighth inning for New York. Well. Tenth game for Rice you see he's done a nice job. He's had a little even though left handers are hitting 200 against him. He's had some walks against the left. -handers. Uh, particularly in Colorado got in trouble. Uh, otherwise he's been done a heck of a job. Pitched so far a, pitched a very good one two three inning on. Friday night getting both Harper and LaRoche in that inning. He'll face a pinch hitter Steve Lombardozzi to start off here in the eighth. Mets leading 2 0. The Mets have not had a shutout victory this season. They had 13 of them last year, finished third in the National League in shutouts. Dylan G went the first five and two thirds innings today. Well, Lombardozzi, the pinch hitter, is Davies. Little uh, favorite on this team. He made the ball club last year. Davey loves his style of play. Four for nine against left handers. Lombardozzi started the opening game of this series, played second base while Espinosa was ailing. He went 0 for 4. Came off the bench last night and flied out as a pinch hitter, so he's 0 for 5 in the series. It'll be Lombardozzi, then Denard Spann, and Jason Wirth for the Nationals, who've been limited to just three hits this afternoon. G went five and two thirds. Left with a couple of men on base. Latroy Hawkins got a big strike out of Ian Desmond to finish the sixth. And then Brandon Lyon, a one, two, three, seventh, helped out by Tejada's sparkling play at shortstop. Now right rice quickly behind his first hitter, two and out. And Lombardozzi Ooh. takes a borderline strike. It's that erratic corner of Mark Carlson. He has this is I don't think that's low. Could have been outside too. Corners are in against Lombardozzi, who swings and pops one foul out of play, two and two. Nobody up behind Rice in the Mets bullpen, with Span waiting on deck. Lombardozzi hits one toward left center. That's going to fall for a base hit. Calgo gets over to cut it off and holds him to a single. So Lombardozzi finds the space in left center. That's the fourth Washington hit, and they get the tying run to the plate here in the eighth. So here is Span, left hand batter, looking for just his second hit in this series. He's gone one for 11. He walked his last time up, but then you'll remember. On a ball in the dirt, 
that Buck was somehow able to backhand. Span was thrown out trying to advance, and that played a big role in the Mets getting through that sixth inning. Rice starts him off with a sinker that misses for ball one. And he's falling behind here. And Rodriguez hanging around to the Washington bullpen. Mets are going to get a right hander up now in their bullpen. There's a fastball strike. One and one to spend. Bobby Parnell could get the call here in the eighth. Remember in Colorado, Terry Collins called on Parnell to try and get a four out save. That's the game where Tejada made that two run throwing error that messed up that strategy. Two and one now to spend with the right hand batter Worth on deck. Got Worth from the right side, then back to back left hand hitters behind him in Harper and LaRoche. So you'd love to be able to push Rice through this inning, but it all depends what he does here against Span. And he's going to have to pitch to Worth. There's no one up quick enough in that bullpen. So it's on Rice. Can't throw strikes. I'd have Span take here. Your pitching coach nervous. And Dan Worth has gotten a solid inning and a third out of his bullpen, but it has been a source of concern over these first three weeks. And now a tough spot here for Rice behind on span three and one. Oh. And he walked him. And the tying runs are on base with nobody out. And that is a very painful walk for Terry Collins and the Mets. Now you've got the big hitters coming up for the Nationals Worth Harper and LaRoche tying runs on base and nobody out. Well with Harper and LaRoche both left hand hitters. After Worth. You want to leave Rice in or you could have had maybe had something some to get Atchison you, in for one batter yeah, here. You and could, then you've got two other lefties correct, in that bullpen. Correct. You could have done that. But you can't foresee. I think also they're trying very hard not to overuse Scott Atchison with the elbow problems Correct. he had last year. He faced three batters yesterday. And you know, not a blooper by La Rondosi, but the big, the, the big sin in this inning is walking the left-hander span. If you're a left-hander out there, you've got to get lefties out. So let's see what Rice can figure out now against Worth. First and second, nobody out. Worth is one for three on the day. He's singled back in the third, and Buck's going to go out for a conversation before they. Go after Worth. One thing about Jason Worth, he's not going to go out of the strike zone much. He sees a lot of pitches, so you're going to have to throw him strikes. Well, they need a double play. The trouble is, you, you know, throw that sinker if Worth's going to be going the other way. He goes to right field so well, the opposite field. And Murphy's going to be the one to hold the runner on. No one's going anywhere. Play defense, move back. And that sinker misses for ball one. I do not like exposing that hole on the right side of the infield to work. They're down two runs. They're not going to double steal. And Worth lays off, and now Rice behind again, two and zero. Oh. Well, hold your. Hold your breath here, folks. You Met fans out there. It's a tough pitch right now. Got to throw a strike. Got a very dangerous hitter up there. Bobby Parnell has been throwing in the bullpen, now consulting with the bullpen coach Ricky Bonus about the lineup that's coming up. Would they bring Parnell in to try and get six outs? Here's the 2 0 to Worth. Ball three. Oh boy, so Rice just unable to throw strikes. Well, this has been the glaring weakness thus far in this young season for the Mets. 
now behind 3 0. Swinging oh. and a double play no. ball. Tejada to Murphy and on the first two. A huge double play for the Mets with Worth swinging on 3 0. I don't believe it. I've got to question that call. The race gets bailed out big time by the decision to have Worth swinging. And so the Mets with a chance to get out of this jam in oh. an inning where Rice has been unable to throw strikes. What a gift. So now Lombardozzi at third with two down and Bryce Harper the batter. So the Mets get exactly what they wanted. Harper is single and walk today one for two and Rice starts him off with a nasty slider nothing in one. Now I know Davey's a riverboat gambler. That's not a strike that slider. But I just can't see given the hit sign there. I don't care if it's Lou Gehrig. Well the thing is you've got a right hand hitter up and you can understand that with the two lefties to follow but as Harper pops one up in foul ground and Buck comes back for a look and it's out of play but this is Bryce Harper who's up and he doesn't give away a whole lot against left hand pitchers and if you have the bases loaded for Harper with nobody out you're in business. Yep. Hard to double up. Man can run. You're down two runs. I just am stunned. Lombardozzi in third with two down. Now Rice has a two strike advantage on Harper. Missed with the slider one and two. Well he's got to feel like he got himself a second life. 14 years in the minor leagues struggling to get to the big leagues all of a sudden he found himself in a very tough spot of his own making and he got a huge gift now trying to cash it in one two again he misses with that slider it's two and two Adam LaRoche looming on deck. Comes a slide ball. Two two to Harper. Struck him out. Scott Rice gets out of a king size jam in the eighth inning. With an assist to Jason Worth. Two nothing Mets in the eighth.
Goes on to pitch the bottom of the eighth for the Nats. Well, another guy. It's amazing how general managers will like certain general managers. They keep making deals with the same teams. Gio Gonzalez from Oakland. Suzuki acquired from Oakland. Well, Mike Rizzo acquired also this man, Henry Rodriguez from the Oakland A's. Hard thrower. Great breaking ball. Can he find the plate? And so far in his career, the answer has been no. And again, this year, five walks in five and a third innings. Ike Davis will lead off as the Mets look for some insurance in the bottom of the eighth after getting helped out of a huge jam in the top of the inning. Ike is one for three and he fouls back that first pitch heater. Nothing in one. Davis today one for three single to right in the fourth his other two at bats he's grounded out to the second baseman. John Buck Lucas Duda to follow. The Mets two runs and four hits the Nationals no runs and four hits. Well, a gift double play. I mean, you got to throw it up there, but Scott Rice, 3 0 count. Davey Johnson rolling the dice with Jason Worth on a 3 0, gave him the hit sign, hits into a double play. It's a rally killer. Off speed pitch from Rodriguez, and it's 1 and 2. Now Henry Rodriguez can throw the ball through a wall. Yes. He reminds me of Rudy Sienes. Same kind of build. You Strike three called. He got him looking at the off speed pitch. And Ike lingers to discuss it with Mark Carlson. Oh. Inside corner. No. Maybe not. Maybe not is right. <laughs> there's, I think. No, uh, nipped. That's too close to take, Ike. Sorry. A lot of times, though, if that catcher has to move the glove all the way across the plate, you're not going to get the call anyway. But as a hitter, you know. Well, here's Buck, who got things started for the Mets today with an enormous home run back in the second inning. Buck's home run traveled 460 feet to the second deck in left center. It took up a big chunk of air on its way out. Since then, he's flied out and struck out. Buck now with seven home runs, 22 driven in. And Rodriguez misses up and in. Lucas Duda waiting on deck. Jordan Zimmerman is on the hook for the Nats. He allowed just two hits in five innings, but one of them was Buck's home run. He walked three. Zach Duke, two impressive innings in relief. He struck out four. And now Rodriguez gets one over three and one to Buck. Bobby Parnell getting ready for the ninth inning. LaRoche, Desmond, and Rendon do up for the Nationals, who've already been shut out twice this year. And a home run cut by Buck, and it's three and two. Well, that's he almost left the ground. Power to power. And guess what? Didn't get it. Didn't catch up to it. It's this one out to right field. Back goes Worth to the warning track, and he runs it down. He is such a good right fielder. And they say that he dropped it, pulling it out of his glove, so the out does count. Maybe we can take a look at that. He had to run a long way back, and he had a late look right before the track to see where the wall was. Just so he, he, can, he can play out there. So two out and nobody on for Lucas Duda, who's over two in a walk today. Well, the poor Marlins were 2 2 with Cincinnati going to the bottom of the seventh. The Reds have scored seven in the seventh and still going. I, I said it in spring. Move over 62 Mets. Four and 14 coming into the day. They lost in 13 innings yesterday. And all of a sudden, far behind today. That's what we be going to Miami on their next road trip next week. You're an old Met fan, Gary, and you've suffered over the years. We all know about the neuroses among these New York Met fans over the years. Ball in the dirt there, change up. Just what, what would it mean to Met fans? <laughs> yes. What would it mean to Met fans for someone to lose? What was it? We had to lose 121. 121. You, you mean would Met fans be upset to give up the record? What, 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 how would they react? Which way do you think? I don't think they'd be unhappy at all. <laughs> I, I mean, would. the Tigers came close, right? 
was in 2004 they had 119 losses and they had a great last week to avoid 120 losses that year. I, I don't think there were met. By the way, this is fun. Um, I, I don't think there were many Met fans who were, you know, rooting against the Tigers breaking the record. So you think it's just an ancient history now? Yeah. It's not something that I think people are wedded to. You know, like now the no hitter drought is gone. That was a defining part of Mets history. I don't think it was right. like anybody was rooting against the no hitter. That's different because it. Well, I mean, it's almost like the 120 losses, like a badge of honor. You think? <laughs> I don't know. You ought to track down somebody who played for that. I team. was just going to say that. I wonder how the surviving members of the 62 Mets would feel about it. It's interesting that. that you mention that because in that Detroit season, Mike Maroth lost 20 games, and he was the first pitcher to lose 20 since Brian Kingman with the A's right. back in the 80s. And Kingman was very protective of that, that he was the last guy to lose 20. He didn't want anybody else to lose 20 because that was a mark of distinction for him. So maybe that carries over to the 62 men. Strike three called due to caught looking. So Rodriguez fans two in the inning and the Reigns go to Bobby Parnell for the ninth with the Mets up two nothing. Worth building Ruben Tejada flashing leather. Uh, terrific play right here. Ruben who's had his troubles early in the season. And the cold weather just makes the play we're used to seeing him make in the course of the season quite often. That came in the seventh inning to Rob Kurt Suzuki and seal a one, two, three inning for Brandon Lyon. Scott Rice worked out a big time trouble in the eighth. So the Mets have gotten two and a third scoreless out of the bullpen. Colin Calgill moves from center field to left field. Kirk Newenheis will play center and bat ninth. And Bobby Parnell tried to save it for New York. He'll hit in the sixth spot. Well, Parnell, one blown save was up in Denver in that game that, ironically, Tejada made the throwing error that had the game was over, and he would have had his second save, but he got a blown save even though it was an unearned run. Two runs. Looking for a second. Adam LaRoche leads off the ninth for Washington. Mets put on the shift against him. And he tries to butt his way on smartly so but he fouled it off down by two runs. That's a good play by LaRoche. Well he has all the third base line here and you're down two runs. Yes because you can't hit a four run homer. Well a five run. Homer. There's no one on or even a two run homer. That's true. <laughs> so I was correct. I don't, I don't have to retract that statement. And the defense with the extreme shift you can see why he wanted to try to place it down the third base line. Interesting right before that pitch David Wright faked as though he were coming in to try and discourage LaRoche from trying to bunt again. 
LaRoche one for two in a walk today. Desmond and Rendon, two right hand batters behind him. Mm. By the way, we were talking about the Tigers and their 119 losses. I misstated the year. It was 03 that they lost 119 games. And how many did they win in a row? I think they won seven of their last eight, something like that. And we were talking about 20 game losers. And you mentioned uh, Kingman, not Dave Kingman in the Open A's. Brian Kingman. Brian Kingman. We did a little research here. And we'll get to that after the Mets bullpen. Take it away, Gare. Last. That's not good. That's right. But they've done well so far today. <laughs> Got a little help in the last inning and hoping that Parnell can seal the deal. 2 2 to LaRoche. Yeah, the breaking ball in the dirt and a full count. Last thing in the world Bobby wants to do is to walk the leadoff hitter with a two run lead. The last Your pitcher to research? win 20 and lose 20 in the same year, Phil Necro in 1979, my MVP year. Phil went. 21 and 20. How about that? He starts to do Jeez. 3 2 from Parnell. And LaRoche fouls back the fastball. Big cut by LaRoche. And you know what? You can't walk it. It's a two run lead. You can't walk anybody. Here's a fastball. That you're going to have. You hit a home run. It's 2 to 1. Coming after you. Number one. And LaRoche swings and misses, and Parnell has the first down in the night. Well, Bobby knew right then he had to dial it up. 96 miles an hour upstairs. These guys that throw that hard, like Parnell, they're very more, they're very effective upstairs. Big out. So one out and nobody on. Now Ian Desmond is 0 for 3 today. He came up with two men on in the sixth inning, and Latroy Hawkins got him looking, the only man Hawkins faced. Jason Worth still wondering why he swung 3 0. <laughs> boy, boy, that was just a gift from the gods. It's a puzzlement, conundrum, an enigma, a paradox. One and one to Desmond. But, but, but if Worth swings and it's a three run home. Oh, right. So Davey rolls the dice. That right. Davey's always been that way. And so, you know, he plays, always plays by his gut. And he's very unpredictable as a manager. And he's had great success. And who's going to argue with him? It's just that Rice was so all over the place at that point. Yes, I agree. One and one to Desmond. And the breaking ball, a broken back grinder for Tejada. Two out. So Parnell has set down the first two in the ninth. And the Nats are down to their final out. Well, Parnell throws him a nice slider here. Good pitch. Oh, you couldn't ask for a better spot. And the bat will tell you why. But it wasn't a good spot. So now Anthony Rendon has gone 0 for 3 in his major league debut. Two fly balls and a strikeout. Trying to keep the Nationals alive. Mets looking for their first shutout victory of the season. And a fastball strike to Rendon. Boy, Parnell really looks good, doesn't he? He's just different. He's coming to his own. He's ready. He just doesn't look like he's nervous anymore. It's confident out there. Not overthrowing, staying within himself. It all comes with experience. Some get it quickly, some don't. Not everybody's Craig Kimbrell stepping into the closer's role at the big league level and popping your eyes out. Arnell's had chances before, but this time more prepared. Two and one to Rendon. By the way, the. Uh, the former closer Frank Francisco through his second inning of scoreless relief on rehab yesterday and who he's on the horizon maybe a couple of weeks away so that'll fortify the Mets bullpen but I think regardless Parnell has got this job and he's going to keep it you know, be very curious how Frank handles that 
Two and one to Rendon. And he gets the letter high strike. And now the Nationals are down to their final strike. Coming up next on Picks 11, it's bloopers. On SNY, it's W.B. Mason post game live. Crowd rising at City Field. Two and two to Anthony Rendon. Strike three call, and the ball game is over. Bobby Parnell works a one, two, three ninth to complete the four hit shutout. Dylan G gets his first victory of the season, and the Mets take the rubber game of the series from the Nationals 2-0. Well, what an impressive inning from Parnell there, a second save of the year. This was a wicked slider to strike out Rendon looking. Look at this. Perfect. Wow. So nicely done. The Mets score one in the second, one in the fourth. Home run by Buck. Oh boy, he continues to hit with power. Seventh home run of the year. Mets score a run on a leadoff walk that wound up scoring on David Wright, and that is the big play of the game right there. I'm sure Davey Johnson's going to have to answer some questions with the press from Washington. 3-0 hit sign. Runners on first and second. Scott Rice struggling, hits into a double play. Game summary brought to you by your Tri-State BMW dealers. Some very important things for the Mets today. Dylan G gets his first victory of the season. Five and two-thirds scoreless, and the bullpen was solid. Three and a third no runs and one hit for that struggling unit as the Mets go back over 500 for the season at nine and eight. And they take two out of three from the Nationals to open the homestand. Mets win it two nothing. We'll come back with more from City Field in just a moment.